Corey say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. <laughs> we made it. Guess where we're at? The Florida RV Super. Really? <laughs> we're at the Florida RV Super Show today, and we're breaking down all of the highlights. We are going to talk about everything that we're doing and what you need to do if you're coming. And all of the new trends for 2024. As well as the crazy expensive shit that you know we ain't gonna buy. <laughs> you, what, you don't have an extra $2 million laying around for that motor coach back there? Not a chance. <laughs> Join us as we walk through our day today and give you an example of what the Florida RV Super Show is all about. Okay, so we've been walking around all of these different Brinkleys. So what do you think about uh, getting a new RV right now? Can we, can we, can we? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Model Z 3400, so we, we did a TikTok on this, so you'll get, a, you'll get a chance to watch it there. But the Model Z 3400, I'm not kidding when I say that might actually be our legit next uh, RV. So let me explain the floor plan a little bit to you. So you've got obviously your typical bedroom in the front, bathroom in the middle, and then your living room kitchen kind of towards the rear all combined. But they have a rear kitchen and patio without it being a toy hauler. With a wet bar. Yeah, that, like this thing is insane. You still have plenty of space inside to cook and do everything that you wanna do, but that Model Z 3400, that's the one That's the one I'd be picking. Oh yeah, I can make so many camper cocktails with this, it would be amazing. So yeah, Brinkley's definitely one to watch. We're loving what they're doing in the industry. They're bringing out high quality stuff. They just debuted their G3950 at the Florida RV Show. Tampa RV, Florida RV Show. Listen, they, t they made a big deal, call it the Florida RV Super Show, because the Tampa RV Show is apparently some small little dinky thing. It's something else, but if you're listening to this or watching this right now, and we're calling it the Tampa RV Show or the Florida RV Show, it's the same thing. Sorry guys, Florida RV Show. Super Show. Florida RV Super Show. There we go. <laughs> so this is kind of just an off, you know, off on the side point. But so we were in the middle of recording, and all of a sudden they decided they wanted to test their speakers. I can still hear it in the background too. And that doesn't was... play really well when you're trying to record something. No, no, not at all. <laughs> but we're kind of walking through. We just got done uh, looking at some campers. We're walking towards the back corner. So here's my thought. What do you think? If you were to make a suggestion, would you say start in the back corner and work your way forward or start in the front and work your way backward? I would probably start in the back corner and work my way forward because you're going to have more energy and more steam when you first start off. And then as you get closer to the front, that's where all the food is. That's where the expo halls are for air conditioning or heat, depending on the weather. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely start at the back and work your way forward. Don't get distracted by all of the cool things to see. Just go start at the back and then come forward. Whew. Man. So, <sighs> we've been here for a couple of hours now. We're uh, actually taking a break from the rain. It's starting to rain outside. Um, so, so far, everything we're seeing seems to be pretty samey samey. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, we're not seeing any huge, crazy new floor plans that we haven't seen before. There's a couple of new features, which is really, really cool. So, like, um, Brinkley had the the 3400, I believe, the G3400. Z. Z3400. Z That's it, um, which has a little patio on the back and a wet bar and... and was really really cool but it's not a toy hauler so that was kind of a cool feature but overall we're not seeing a ton of differences um everybody is sticking with the lighter interior they're also sticking with the lighter exterior although we're starting to see some pops of color around the outside of a lot of the new 2024 units which is kind of a fun yeah a fun little extra detail i think one of the biggest things that i i feel like manufacturers are kind of missing is the um living part of being in an rv because sometimes it it's rains. raining <laughs> and so we we talked about this last year about stupid tv well a lot of people commented and were like well i'm not going RVing to watch tv well that's you fun. never know <laughs> like when it rains sometimes you just need to be able to sit inside so like not having cup holders and stuff like that that is a big trend this year is they've kind of eliminated the cup holders for some odd reason a lot of them have replaced the cup holder with the wireless charging ports just I right here it was here only the grand design that did that but like this yeah like, but like this one that we're in right now we're in an alliance paradigm and there's no there's no cup holders anywhere except for this one side table 
but they're seating all around this front living space. Yeah, you could literally have like six or seven people, maybe even eight people, sitting in all these couches, and yet only one person is going to be able to put their cup anywhere. You know what Mama's going to say? She's going to say, no drinks in the living room. <laughs> it's a miss. It's a miss, guys. You fixed stupid TV in a lot of the units, and now you pulled out cup holders. Come on, think about functionality here. These are people who are going RVing, and yes, we're going to spend a lot of time outdoors, but when the weather's bad or when you're just tired in the evening and you want to unwind and maybe there's too many bugs to be out at the campfire, having a nice place to sit down, have a drink, and chill out in your living room would be a good thing. Now, we haven't gone through all the accessories and exhibit halls yet, so I'm going to be interested to see if there's anything like new innovations as far as like products to help kind of make some of that more convenient. Like, yeah. So in our RV, we put cup holders up on the wall. And so that kind of helps a little bit. Where Kara's sitting right now, there's no wall over there, so there's really nowhere for us to put a cup holder. Yeah, there's a, <clears throat> a staircase right here because we're in a front living unit. So there's a staircase that comes up to the front, which is great because then there's a huge bottom basement area below for storage. But there's no place for me to cup, put my drink because there's no cup holder. <laughs> there you go. Well, well, it's starting to rain more again, unfortunately. But... We're going to continue on our merry little way, and we'll keep you updated. The supplier building is right across the street from us, so are you ready to brave the rain and run in there? If I have to. Let's do it. Okay, so we've been looking at a ton of RVs today. If you want to see any of the ones that we checked out we liked, uh, follow us on TikTok. Uh, our reviews and everything will be up there. Uh, but now it's time to go into the supplier hall B. This is the expo. Yeah, Supplier Hall B, and check out all of the accessories. Obviously, if you've got your RV already, then I think the Expo Hall might be one of the most beneficial places to check out. They've got bikes, they've got tire supplies, obviously the Garmin and all, all the different companies, and there's some like weird ones, like certain kitchen supplies that you're like, what? You may or may not need in your RV, but if you're not full-time, you might need it for your house. That's true, so you can pick up some stuff for your house. but. If you've already got your RV, like coming to these places, you can get different uh, memberships and things like that. So like we're walking by Sun Outdoors. Yep. Thousand Trails is here, I know. KOA is here too. So this is a great place to get at least information, if nothing else, on places you might want to go take your RV to. Exactly. And oddly enough, didn't realize this coming into it, the, the uh, show is actually dog friendly so there's a lot of people yeah i noticed dogs. that there's been some really sweet pups around too that we've seen yeah and it's a good opportunity to see like when you're looking so even if you already have your rv when you're looking at some of these rvs you'll see some of the like upgrades and renovations that they're doing and add-ons and things like that you know like generators and solar panels and what everybody's working towards obviously you know maybe you do maybe you don't want to do it but it's a good opportunity to just see what upgrades are available to you. It's also a great way to get to know people in the industry as well. Yeah, I mean, the number of people we've run into today that know us from social media okay. and we're able to talk about like what, you know, what's interesting, what's going on. Obviously the biggest thing, we called it out just a few minutes ago, well, maybe a few seconds for you, but the <laughs> lack of cup holders. The lack of cup holders. Yeah. There's also a big push this year for no carpet in the interior of a lot of the units, except for some of them, like the camper vans that have a ton of carpet in them, which is a little strange. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a camper van, you're, you probably are going to be in and out a lot more often. Like some, there's days, yeah, it's not preferred, but there have been days where we'd never leave our fifth wheel. Fine, no big deal. You don't really get your feet dirty, but an all carpet and a camper van where you're going to get out of that thing. Think about parking your van at the beach and then coming into the carpet. Oh my gosh, <laughs> better, that vacuum better be running constantly. Exactly. Other than that though, we haven't seen really anything super, super groundbreaking this year, but lots of new, like little tiny features that we're starting to see. We went back by that Brinkley we were talking about a few minutes ago, and the one discussion we had when we walked away, you know, it was priced reasonably like we could probably get it if we wanted it but we don't have anywhere to store our bikes yeah that's definitely a consideration you need to know exactly how you're going to use your rv and what all crap you're going to want to put into your rv so when you're shopping around for an rv look at floor plan models that are going to accommodate all of your toys and accessories that you might want to take with you on your camping trip you know what i didn't think i just now thought about what that brinkley could have had a, a tow tow hitch at the back where we could store the bikes outside it could and 
there's a potential that depending on if it's locked into the frame or not, it could actually accommodate that weight for our bikes, because our bikes do weigh a little bit since they're the electric bikes. Yeah, they're the, not electric, but they're the hybrid ones, you know, so that way we can, you know, pedal when we want to and not pedal when we get tired. <laughs> so this entrance, um, at the very entrance when you get inside, is Airstreams and Prevost, I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Prevost. It, you, we talked about it last year on the podcast. This is where like the $2 million motorhome is. You legit have to take your shoes off they give you like little booties to wear to get inside and actually tour it but an rv show is a place where you can actually go walk inside of a two million dollar rv because i mean guys who can afford a two million dollar rv not me definitely not me but somebody can and that's why it exists and there was a bathtub in it there was a bathtub in it it was badass so if you miss your bathtub all you need is $2 million and you can have a bathtub again. Well, it was a great day. We got to see a ton of new models, all the fun new RVs that are coming out for the spring and summer this year. You're definitely gonna be able to find an RV that you would want going to the RV show. You may not necessarily buy it at the RV show. Don't feel pressured to do so. Even if they have bunker sales, I promise, don't be pressured to buy it. They will have those sales again but it's a great place for you to confirm exactly which camper is gonna be the perfect camper for you. And if you're gonna be at the Florida RV Show, come see us on Saturday. We're doing a meet and greet from 12 to 1.30, right near where the seminars and the food pavilion are gonna be. There's a big tent there. Come say hi to us. We'd love to meet you. It has been a day. It has been a day. If you go to an RV show, be sure that you wear good walking shoes, drink plenty of water, and just be prepared to be exhausted afterwards. <laughs> I mean, if I were you, I'd also, you know, plan for all kinds of weather because it can be rainy, it can be sunny, it can be hot, it can be cold. Like today was warm, tomorrow's supposed to be cold. Yeah, and we were dodging raindrops pretty much all day, but it wasn't too bad. Um, it might rain on you the rest of the time though you'll have to check the weather we're not camping on site but there is camping available on site we're a little bit north of the uh fairgrounds but we were able to get here really quickly today which was industry day so a uh, lot less traffic just be patient with the parking situation it's going to be a little bit crazy but once you get in you're going to have a blast i guarantee it and i know this releases on thursday so this may be too late for some of you but if you can come during the week not on the weekends a, a lot fewer crowds during the weekday absolutely and if you're not already subscribed to our channel definitely subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes and we'll see you next time okay bye bye we did definitely have a blast seeing all the cool stuff spacecraft makes these custom semi truck trailer rvs that are like crazy they've got one there Last year, it, they had like a toy hauler. This year, they had like a like three different uh, patios. One was on top of the RV. Yeah, it was nuts. And even the on the spacecraft one, they at least had cup holders. They did have cup holders. <laughs> so that many has other been such a thing this year is, uh, for some reason, they do not want you to have any cup holders whatsoever if you're in the living room. Yeah, no drinks in the living room. I feel like I'm 12 again. Whew, I'm tired, man. My feet hurt.